Amen. All right, running with the horses is what we're going to talk about tonight. I'm going to stop this share really quickly. Amen. 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 The scripture says, if thou hast run with the footmen and they have wearied thee, then how can thou contend with the horses? And if in the land of peace wherein thou trustest, they wearied thee, how will thou do in the swelling of Jordan? Amen. Amen. This scripture is one of those that does not need interpreting. Amen. It's pretty plain. It's not one that needs any deep confounding exegesis. It doesn't need any dissection. It just is what it is. It says what it says. Amen. It says, how can you run with the horses if you get tired trying to keep up with the soldiers on the ground? Amen. Simple as that. The verse continues by saying, how will you navigate the thicket or the forests, amen, of Jordan, when you get tired making your way through the land that you're comfortable with and that you already know so well? How will you make it through the thicket? How will you make it through a forest, through a land that you don't know? Amen? amen. These are good questions. Amen. Do you agree? These are good questions. They're very real questions. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right now, we are in the midst of a pandemic. That's something that is not news to anyone. Wherever you are in the world, there has been a taste or a tinge, at least, of this COVID. Amen. That, that's, that's going about and has been going around. It'll be a year um, in a couple of weeks or in a week or so. It'll be a year where it first hit in China. A friend of mine that teaches in China was keeping us abreast of what was going on. And I remember this time last year, again, maybe a week from now, we were saying, oh goodness, that's so horrible. We're praying for you. We're praying for you guys over there. Stay, 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 stay safe. And then in a matter of a couple of weeks, we were all privy to what was going on over there. And we were having to go through some of the same um, lifestyle changes and, and experiences that they were going through. So we're in the midst of this pandemic and church buildings are still closed or at least having limited services. I know some of the pastors that I've interacted with within ABC have gone back to service and then have had to close again. Because as soon as they opened service, people ended up with COVID and they had to go out again because they were really listening to the people. There were the people's desire to go back to church, which we understand that. But we have to use wisdom and we have to seek the Holy Spirit in these matters. Amen. And so they've closed the churches again. So there's no potluck services right now or potluck dinners. There are no women's days and men's days and youth days and ushers days and all the days that we have at the, at the different churches. There's no bake sales and no fellowship hour. There's no concert lighting. And the churches that are that are large like that, that have that look like a big concert space, they don't have the concert lighting there. There's not the big worship teams. There's nothing to attract those who just see church as a social group. Amen. Those who just see church as a social gathering, as a time to get out and get away. There's none of that for people who just see church as a place where they are to be entertained or a place that they go for entertainment. There's nothing there that will allow preachers who have, who have limited themselves and, and who haven't studied to show themselves approved, amen, like the word of God says, or who depend on aesthetics or other groups of people to distract or deflect from them failing to give the unadulterated word of God to their congregations, the, the unaltered word of God to the members of the church. Amen. Because I, we see a lot of that going on where there's so much happening. You just may get to the word eventually. Amen. You may get to the crux of things eventually because there's so much going on and that's not what church was supposed to be, but we see that it has happened in many different areas. So in this capacity, we as Christians, we as Christians who are true followers of Christ have to be able to run with the horses. Amen. Especially in seasons like that, we this we have to be able to make it through the unfamiliar territory, like the thicket that is spoken about in the scripture for tonight. We have to do this because even though we're in perilous times right now, our Christian duty has not changed. Amen. God's word hasn't changed. The word of God says that it's the same today, yesterday, and will be the same. It's unchanging. 
Amen. It's not going to change. We did not miraculously open up the Bible and the book of Matthew changed completely. We still have the same function. And our function is to go out and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we know that that name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's not the lights. It's not about the lights. It's not about the events. It's not about the, the church coffee shops that we see popping up everywhere. And, and all of these things, all of this stuff and all of this fluff that we've put into the church is not all about that. It's not about uh, the newfound gimmicks that God's ecclesia has chosen to use to attract people that's going to get that job done. That's not going to get us to the place where we can fulfill that call that God has given us. Amen. Amen. The first century church grew because there was a missionary zeal. Amen. There was a fire inside that they may not have even understood what it was, but it was in there. Amen. We talk about uh, the, the, in, in the olden times, the older people used to say, it's like fire shut up in my bones. Amen. There's that fire. Amen. That zeal. And they had that zeal. It was a missionary zeal that they had, even though there were people after them. Their very lives were in danger. Here we are able to, to worship freely, able to worship of our own accord whenever we want to. But that zeal is not the same. That zest is not there anymore. There was a real desire in that first century church to grow the church because true believers saw the truth of God's word. Amen. They saw a, a way to receive healing from their spiritual, their emotional, their, their physical diseases and diseases, whatever it is that were going on, that was going on around them, they saw a way to get through that. And they knew that that way was through Christ. Amen. Amen. They saw a way to have hope in this life and beyond this life. And they didn't keep the truth of God and his word to themselves. Many of us do that. We can go an entire week and not tell anybody anything about God not invite anybody to service, not tell somebody that there's a way out of what you're going through. We can sympathize with people. We can cry with people, empathize with people, but unless we present them with the word of God, all of that is for naught. It means absolutely nothing. See, this time that we're in right now allows us a very unique opportunity to grow this church. Amen? This church. If we grow Mount Olive, Amen. Then it allows us to contribute to the growth of the church, the big C church. Amen. The ecclesia, the kingdom of God. We're able to take little bites out of a big elephant. Amen. We're able to do our part. Amen. If we think about growing this church, this unique time that we're in right now allows us and it requires us to go beyond the functions to go beyond our strength, our own strength, our, our own endurance of footmen, amen, the, the, the endurance that the footman that was talked about in the word, we can go beyond that and we can actually run with the horses, amen? Amen. But first we have to understand that footmen themselves are a team. Footmen themselves are an army working together. I had to go back when the Lord gave me this verse that, that we are in tonight. I didn't quite know, just like most of the time, I don't quite know where God wants me to go with it. I get the verse and I don't know exactly what it means or what he wants me to do, but praise God, we have the Holy Spirit. But he took me back to my brother. When my brother enlisted in the army, I was 10 years old, amen? And I remember I, was ex I wasn't excited that he was leaving, but I was excited that in a few months we would be able to travel and I was going to be able to go to an actual military base and see him graduate from basic training. That was a big deal. Amen. Because I, I had never been on a military base. I didn't know what to expect, expect but I knew that it would be something kind of cool. I thought that, that we'd be able to see down there. So when we got to Fort Jackson, we were able to witness some of the training that the soldiers had received. We were able to see where they ate. We were able to see the barracks where they slept. We were able to see where they um, exercised and, and all of those obstacle courses that they were on. They would run and get on their bellies and go through the tunnels. And then they climb up the rope and jump over the wall. We were able to see all of those things. And in a matter of months, those things were the exact things that caused my brother to be a different person. Amen. He was a little bit wild. 
<laughs> the spirit. And when, when, when he got in there, even though he was still a teenager himself, he was just 18 years old, but you could see a little difference in him after he had gone through some training and gotten some discipline. We took him to the airport when he first um, entered in and we took him by himself, amen, to the airport and dropped him off. But the U.S. Army connected him with people from different states, amen. The Army connected him with people of different backgrounds, with people who had different upbringings from people who may have been from rural areas or from urban areas or suburban areas or uh, major cities. They connected him with different people who had different experiences, even though they got on that plane as individuals. They were to be connected with a team of people. They were different sizes, they were different heights, they were different weights, they were different colors, they were different nationalities, but they were put together to train for a specific function. Amen? Amen. They were not there to, be, to prepare themselves to, to, to go play a game of soccer. They weren't there to prepare themselves to go play football, but they were a team that were preparing to go into battle if need be. Amen. That's mm -hmm. what they were preparing for. And then they were just going to be a, a, a part of another uh, conglomerate. Amen. Because we have our U.S. Army, but we have allies, right? We have allies. So they were preparing to be a part of, of a bigger team if they needed to go into war. And they were going to have allies from different countries and different uh, ethnicities and different backgrounds, but they were going to be on the same page. They had to get their heads in the game because they had a function that they were looking toward. They were told at the beginning of basic training, just like we've heard even in some colleges, but it, it all comes from the, the military training where they were told at the beginning that they weren't all going to make it. When they first get there into the basic training, and I would imagine that it's just like that in other countries, they get there and there's um, a sergeant or whatever the, the um, equivalent um, higher up is, and they got, try to intimidate them a little bit and tell them to look to their right and look to their left. And, and most likely the person that they're looking at is not going to be there by the end of that basic training because they were trying to psych them up or psych them out for those that they knew may not be strong enough to make it. They, they, they wanted to make sure that the people who were in it were gonna be in it and the people who weren't quite prepared would rise up and get their mental right to be prepared to do what they had to do and be a part of this team. But then they knew that there were those that were gonna to want to loosely follow the rules. There were those that were going to want to break the rules. There were those that were going to re want to reinterpret the rules to fit their own desires. Desires that could possibly get their fellow soldiers hurt or killed in a certain situation or under certain circumstances. Amen? In actual battle, it would get their, their counterparts hurt, maimed, or, or killed if they didn't follow the rules, if they didn't follow the training. Amen? they wouldn't make it through basic training. And so the sergeants or whoever their higher up was told them that they couldn't physically or mentally endure or they wouldn't make it. They told them that, amen? They started out on the same playing field. They were all given the same food. They were given the same equipment. They were given the same clothing, right? They were given the same resting places. They were given the same study materials. Some took it all seriously. And some didn't, and they failed. Amen? Some failed, and they just did not make it. Amen? Amen. They couldn't run with the footmen. They weren't able to run with the footmen. And that was an unfortunate circumstance. But it was because they wanted to live like the outside world. They wanted to live like civilians. And they couldn't do that because that now they were in an army with other people. Amen? It's the same in the church. It's the exact same in the church. We're given the same tools. We're given the same word of God. We're each given a measure of faith as we're told in Romans 12, 23. We're each given the same opportunity. Amen. We're on the same playing field, but some of us will utilize those tools and become strong footmen who can then run with the horses and make it through unknown territories. And some, unfortunately, will fail. Amen.
Some will fail. The question tonight is, which one will you be? That's the question that's on the table tonight. Which one will you be? Will you fail by bending the rules? By leaving the rules up to loose interpretation as God, as if God was just leaving suggestions? Amen. Saying, oh, you can do this or not. It's up to you. We can't expect to be on the same page if we just bend the rules. Amen. Or will you run with the horses? Be strong in the Lord. Lean on him and grow the church. Amen. Joshua 24, 15 says, choose ye this day who you will serve. And he goes on to say, but as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. I can stay with, with, with full vigor and vitality. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You want to be able to answer that question the same. Choose you this day. Who will you serve? Who will you serve? Can you say that you will serve the Lord, you and your household? See, we have a real opportunity as a church in this time. We have a real opportunity here at Mount Olive, like I just said. We have the chance to build a church that's comprised of people all over the world because we're doing it like this. We don't have a sticks and brick bricks church that we're trying to run to open again. We're not worried about the lights being cut off and all of that. We're not concerned about that. We just need to keep the internet going. That's all we need. We got the broadband going. We're all right here. Amen. So we're in a unique position. We have the opportunity. We touched on this and I think it was wellness ministry the other day when, when, when we were just kind of saying that we can talk to people who are in places that we never heard of. We have the opportunity to fellowship with people who look like people we may have never seen before, that we've never been in the same room before, that have different accents, that can speak different languages. Because I will say we do need to get some software or some translation software where we can get the word out. I've already checked into those kind of things. Those are slight limitations. We can communicate with people right here who we would not be able to understand if they were sitting right next to us. And we can worship the same God, our same Lord, our same Savior right next to somebody or right here with somebody online who we may not be able to ever meet face to face or communicate with. with. We have a very unique opportunity to fulfill the great commission that God gave us that he left us with. And I am so sure that we can do it. We can run and not be weary. We can walk and not faint because he'll mount us up with wings as eagles. This is not a, a, a fantasy. This is not something that we have to hope for. This is a promise that God gave us in Isaiah 40, 31. He said that he'll mount us up, that we can run and not grow weary. We can walk and not faint. We can do it. We can do it. It's not wishful thinking. It's not having, having hopes that are just way too out there. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the question is, what is holding us back? What's holding us back as a church? What's holding us back as individuals? Is there something stopping us from being all in for Christ? Is it time? Is it emotional baggage? Is it past hurts? Is it fear? What is it? Philippians 3, 13 and 14 says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. Amen. I press forth. That's what we have to do. We have to press forth. Run forward with the aid of the Holy Spirit, not our own endurance, because we can be physically weak at any given time. But with the Holy Spirit, he will lift us up, mount us up with wings as eagles. He'll release us from all of those things that have us bound. Amen. We just have to trust. We just have to believe. Jesus told his disciples, take up your cross and follow me. Amen. Amen. He said, whoever would save his life would lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. He says, for what profit a man to gain the whole wide world and lose his soul? Or what will a man give in return for his soul? That's Matthew 16, 24 through 26. 
We can gain it all and lose everything because the only thing that really matters is the word of God. Only what we do for Christ will last. That's the word. That's not me saying it. That's the word of God. Only what we do for Christ will last. And all of us are able to do something, no matter what circumstance we're in. We're all able to do something. Give. All of us. Amen. 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 We can all do our part to fulfill that great commission. And again, we have a unique opportunity right here. We're focused on worshiping like this. We're focusing on being able to bring people from different states. I can look out and I can see people from Michigan. I can see people that are right here from Georgia. I see someone who's right here from, from New York. I see someone who's a people, a man, two people who are here from over in the UK. And that's just the people that I can see on here. I don't know who's not uh, connected with their with their photos or their name in their boxes. Thank you. But the amen, Sister Berta, so good to have you here. Where are you from? Waterford, Michigan. Waterford, Michigan. Amen. That's where if you well see he's up to me in the box above you. I don't know where he is on your screen, but Deacon Demon up there was from Waterford, Michigan. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We can do it. Yes, we can do it. Amen. We Praise just have God. to trust God and we have to lean on each other, depend on each other because Believe. we are family. Just like I said, I got so excited when I saw Sister Cindy pop up because I haven't seen her face live in a couple of years now. Didn't but when I saw you? her, we're still connected. We're still one. You can look and see she's on our, on our website because yep. she's one of us. I put her picture up just like everybody else because she's one of us. We're family. Again, I don't know how many times I can say it. I don't care what color. I don't care what nationality. I don't care what gender. We are family. Amen. Because we have worshiped together under the same God, our same Savior. He's the one who shed the same blood for all of us. And we're all adopted into his fold. So we just have to commit to each other and commit to him especially and say, we're coming together and we're going to do it and we're going to reach those nations. And we're going to baptize people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I was caught Amen. up in that for a second. Amen. I said, Lord, I know how people can join the church. We can join the church right here. That's fine. I know how we can have communion. We have communion right here. That's fine. My thing was, Lord, how am I going to baptize? How am I going to be able to really dip people in that water? That was my question. That's the question a lot of people have right now. Me thinking with my own ra rational, right, quotes, rational mind, I said what I'll do is when someone gives themselves to God and they haven't been baptized, I'll get on the phone and get with other churches and see, you know, can you baptize this person and this and that and the other, and if they choose to stay over there, then that's fine because they're in the fold. God said, you're doing too much. You're doing way too much. Mm. We could have somebody say, say Sister Berta right now, wants to go and she wants to be baptized if, if she weren't baptized she can go run a tub of water right this minute sit in that tub and I can say I baptize you right now in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and that name is Jesus and she can go right down come up and she is baptized in the name of Jesus amen God amen. knows what he's doing we just have to depend on him I told her the group that I was talking to the other day I want to say it was in the wellness ministry I said you know sometimes God has to talk to me like a kid because sometimes I just do too much it's simple and he's just just slow down and listen he just has to tell me to sit down and listen sometimes and he gave me that that solution right there that's all we have to do I remember my dad one time we used to go when we had our a, a sticks and bricks church we would go next door there was a um a nursing home right next door to our church and we would go over there, it was either once a month or twice a month, and just have fellowship with the residents there. And there was a lady there who was 90 something years old. She was 90 plus. Um, she was on oxygen and she was really having a hard time getting around, but she insisted that she be baptized. Okay, so my dad needed to use some sense here, right? He's not going to take this woman and put in and immerse her in water, right? And jeopardize her health. So where we don't get into sprinkling and that kind of thing, and we don't sprinkle babies and all of that. In this instance, he said, okay, she wants to be baptized. We're going to immerse, right? So he did put water on her head and he had her put her hand in a big um, tub, a bucket of water. 
And he said, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son. Sometimes we got to just think outside the box because the reality is it was her heart. God knew her heart. He knew that she had a desire to be obedient to his word and not change the rules. Amen. She had a desire to be a footman and then be able to run with the horses, but she was almost a hundred. So he just worked it out. Amen. 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 And there's no way you can convince me that that was not okay with God. There's no Amen. way you'll ever convince me of that. Amen. She was able to fulfill her duty. And my dad, as the pastor, was able to fulfill his. And the world went on and she was still there the next month. Amen. Amen. So we have an opportunity. I say it over and over and over again. Choose you this day who you will serve. But if you want to be a part of, of Mount Olive and grow it, we have an opportunity here. Let's just take it and run with the horses. Amen. Amen. And start training some footmen to be able to run with the horses as well. Amen. 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 Now is the time that we can commit ourselves to Christ, recommit ourselves to Christ. Tell the Lord, I may have let past situations, I may have let some past hurts and past pains, the, the lack of time keep me away from you for a moment, but I'm here and I'm going to give you whatever you give me to give you. Amen. Whatever you allow me to give you, I'm here to give it to you in the name of Jesus, because I appreciate what he's given to me. Amen. 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 So if there's one this evening that would like to give themselves to the Lord, now is the time to do that. We're here to receive you. If there are those, we're on the, the Facebook Live right now. If there are those that don't know Christ and you may be watching, please come on over to this side. I can't see you out there and I don't want to get into answering comments and all that kind of stuff because we're not getting into all that fluff. We're doing church. So just come over here to this side. Click on the website. It's, if you're on there, it's right there in the link. Come on and you can do it on this side. Amen. Amen. If a sticks and bricks church is something you can desire, we can help you find that too. It's not a big deal. We just want you to be a part of the kingdom, the big ecclesia. Amen. Amen. We can do it. We can fulfill the call. I have no doubt in my mind, but I especially believe it in my heart. I feel it in my gut. When you get saved, your heart is your gut. I feel it deep down in my reins. Amen, that we can do this. Amen. 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 We just have to commit. So if there's one today, now is the time to come. If you're not able to come on this side and you do want to give your life to Christ, just pray with us now. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for your life. We thank you that you gave your life for us. We thank you that we're reminded during this Christmas season, Lord God, that you chose to come down here and put on a suit, so to speak, of flesh, Heavenly Father, and walk down on this earth 33 and a half years and minister and heal and give your word before you chose to give your life for us. Because it says in your word and it's written that the wages of sin is death. So, Father God, right now we come to you declaring, Heavenly Father, believing in our hearts, Lord Jesus, and on one accord saying and declaring that you are our Lord and Savior, and we desire you to come into our hearts. We believe that you are the Savior. We believe that you went to the cross and died for us. We believe that you were resurrected in fulfillment of the scripture and that you ascended into heaven and you now sit on the right hand of the Father. We believe that you are coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. We believe, Heavenly Father, that you're coming to judge the living and the dead and that one day we will be with you for all eternity. We believe that, Lord God. And we know, Heavenly Father, that you are able to forgive us of our sins. So we ask now that you forgive us of all of those sins of omission, all of those sins of commission, and that you wipe us clean, Heavenly Father, that you make us white as snow, Heavenly Father, but cover us in your blood, Lord Jesus. We believe in the power of your blood. We believe in the power of your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father. We believe in the triune Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we desire right now, Lord, to run with you, Heavenly Father, knowing that if we are running with you, Heavenly Father, we're not only keeping up with the horses, running with the horses, but we're running beyond what even the horses can run, Heavenly Father, if we are covered and energized by the power of your blood. We thank you right now, Father, for these and all things in Jesus' name. And we say together, amen, 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 and amen. 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 amen, amen, amen. 
Amen. It's now time for us to go into our communion service. So if you don't have your elements, your bread, your water, your crackers, your juice, whatever it is, if you can take a minute to go and get that. Um, Brother Kai is going to give us a selection and we're going to have communion right after that. And we'll wait. Um, if you want to give your offering afterward, you can do that on the website. If you have an offering that you would like to give, you can do that. But we're not going to take time during service to do that. We just want to stay focused on God right now. Amen. And, and go into the communion service. Amen. Brother Amen. Kai, it's all yours. All right. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voices, same old lies, if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's better life, there's better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you fear loss, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We're all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We all found ourselves worn out from the same old fire. We've all run things we know just ain't right. When there's a better life, there's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Oh, if you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Kai. Amen. Amen. Everyone has their elements. Now it's time for communion. I just want to acknowledge Sister Jerry. Amen. We it's so good to see her. It's so good to see people coming back. Amen. Amen. People have had, you know, it's it's taking up the slack for other people and working longer hours and all of that but we just thank God that that we're a family and that we're together amen just like we just spoke of amen amen first corinthians 10 17 says because there is one bread we who are many are one body for we all partake of one bread amen 
And again, I read Acts, I'm going to read it again from last week, Acts 2.42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. That's what we want to focus on here at Mount Olive, simple church, the task at hand, what God has told us to do without all of the fluff. Amen. Just grassroots church. Amen. 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 We know that on the night the Lord was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which will be broken for you. And he said, as much as you eat and drink, you do show the Lord's mercy till I come. And they ate together. And when they finished eating, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all people so that sins will be forgiven. And he said, this do in remembrance of me. And they drank together. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this service. We thank you for each person, each family, each kindred, each circle, Heavenly Father, that is represented here, Lord God. We ask, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that you anoint us afresh, Heavenly Father. Allow us, Lord God, to think about all those people we know and those people they may know and those people they may know, Lord God, so that we can ask somebody to come over to our service, Lord Jesus Christ, so that we can make a dent, Heavenly Father, and contribute to the growth of the kingdom of God, Heavenly Father, by growing Mount Olive. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you bring the workers, Lord Jesus Christ, those that have a desire to work in your field, Heavenly Father, those that have a desire to be footmen, those that have a desire to run with the horses. We ask you to bring them, Lord Jesus Christ, those who are leaders, Heavenly Father, those who have a call to ministry, Lord God, those who have a desire to plant their own churches, Heavenly Father, in your name. We ask you to bring them, Lord Jesus. It says in your word and it is written, whosoever will, let them come. Bring the people, Heavenly Father. Bring the hearts, Lord God. And we don't ask you, Heavenly Father, to bring anyone who's cleaned up and pristine and perfect. We ask you to bring those people, Heavenly Father, who are in need of a word. Those people, Heavenly Father, who may not know you in the free part of your sins. Those people who may have, have, have had issues with alcohol, drugs, any other addictions, Lord God. We ask you to bring them, Heavenly Father, so that we can love on them the way you loved on us, Lord God, and grow your church, Heavenly Father. You didn't come down here, Heavenly Father, to seek and save those who were Pharisees and those who were Sadducees. You came here to seek and save the lost. And that's who we are asking you to bring, Heavenly Father, so that we can welcome them with love, Lord Jesus. And Heavenly Father, those who may not have had a shoulder to rest on, those who may not have had an ear, Heavenly Father, to hear them, Lord Jesus Christ, to, to tell what they have been through and, and someone to listen to them with an open heart and open mind. We we ask you to bring them to us, Heavenly Father, so that we can love on them the way you love on us each and every day. And Father, we'll be so careful to give you the thanks, the praise, and honor, and the glory, Heavenly Father, for you are God and you're God all by yourself. You're the king that we worship, and it's you that we adore in this season and throughout the rest of the year and throughout the rest of our lives. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name, and together we say amen. 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 Just have a